Welcome to the lecture series of Public Theology, a cooperation of the Berlin Institute for Public Theology, the Bayer's Now Day Center for Public Theology, and the Lutheran World Federation. Hello, what a pleasure to meet you in this lesson, uh, this hour and this time. My name is Reverend Professor Sonde Bobay Agang. I live and work in Nigeria at one of the theological uh, seminaries. Uh, my seminary is called Equa Theological Seminary, Jos, Nigeria. The lesson I want to share with you this hour and this particular time is Faith Actor in Civil Society. The subtopic is between civil commitment and resistance. Between civil commitment and resistance. The objective of this lesson are four. The first objective is that I hope that as you listen to me, you will grasp the tension between the task of being a faith actor civil commitment and resistance. The task between faith actor, civil commitment and resistance. Two, I hope that you will understand what civil commitment and resistance involved. Three, I hope that you will gain skills that will enable you to hold in total balance and learn how to integrate faith, civil commitment, and nonviolence resistance. Fourth, I hope that you will have a model and be able to teach other faith actors what civil commitment to civility, what uh, what Commitment to civility and nonviolence resistance are all about. Particularly, I want you to understand that civil resistance or civil commitment means standing up against all structures and forms of human brutality, injustices, in either in families, in communities, in churches and in the larger society. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that our faith as Christians have has a public significance, a public perspective. Our faith is not a private faith. Our faith is a public faith. So it needs to engage the public. It needs to be taken to the public sphere. We need to begin to see how we can collapse the sacred, secular divide that causes us to watch evil being perpetrated without doing anything. So my, my primary focus in this lesson is to help you as you listen to me to understand that our faith has a public significance, a public implication. And what is that public implication of our faith, our Christian faith? This is the question that I hope you will find an answer as we go along. The first thing, as I look at it by way of introducing the topic, is the fact that this topic involves the need for an integration of our faith with other spheres of life. And this involves civil, civil commitment and resistance. And to realize how crucial this is, as a Christian, wherever you find you are safe, what God expects you to do with your faith is to be able to transform that sphere and reposition it to infuse an ethics, a morality that 
embraces an understanding of who God is because in every society there are fed actors and they often have to grapple with the reality of inhumane tendencies. These inhumane tendencies include domination, exploitation, marginalization, and oppression of the weakest members of our society, the poorest of the poor. Therefore, civil commitment and resistance refers to those in every society, Christian, who genuinely understand the need to collapse the sacred secular divide and have a holistic faith, a faith that brings a focus on justice, a focus on understanding of who God is. So, and you have to give priority to the claim of God's revelation. And the claim of God's revelation is that we are all created in the image of God and the likeness of God. And so because every human being is created in the image of God, every human being deserves justice, deserves love, deserves compassion, deserves respect as a human being. And the claim of God's justice, the claim of God's love, the claims of God's compassion, and righteousness, honesty, truth telling, um, hard work, commitment, sincerity, um, the fear of God in every sphere of life, these claims, these claims are above, are over and above the claims that make you to want to dominate others. And in most cases, the claims that want to make us or uh, a kind of create a perspective that we don't be able to, that we will not be able to see other people like God sees them, are uh, the claim of nationalism, regionalism, ethnicity, religious affiliation. All of these claims can indeed cause us to exploit others, marginalize others, oppress others, uh, hinder them from experiencing and enjoying their potentials. So this is what we need to understand. Basically, what civil commitment and nonviolent resistance involve? In every life, I mean in civil life, the reality of the tension between the two or two things stand out. One, there is a tension between justice and injustice. This understanding of seeing a world that is supposed to enjoy justice is rather facing the challenge of injustice at all spheres of life and a fed actor can easily be overwhelmed by this no one involved in civil society can stand and watch injustice being perpetuated perpetuated by those who are supposed to protect the vulnerable and who are those that are supposed to protect the vulnerable they are people officials government officials politicians, uh, police, the armed forces, and all of these people, law enforcement agents, are supposed to protect the rights of people. But in most cases, you see injustice being perpetrated by these people against the poor, against the wicked members of the society. And as a fit actor, as one who discerns and understands that their faith has a public implication, you cannot just stand and watch injustice being perpetuated about fellow human beings. Now, we live in a world that there is a big gap between truth and lie. Truth and lie. 
And this continue to grow to the detriment of the human race and the other, I mean, the natural world. Justice and injustice are two different things. They are the difference between what is right and what is evil or what is not right. Uh, what hinders people from benefiting and experiencing their potentials as human beings. But who is this faith actor that we are talking about? In this lesson, I want you to understand that nonviolent is the kind of person that we are thinking about when we are thinking of a faith actor. A faith actor in terms of practicing what I call nonviolent resistance is somebody that understands who God is and sees the importance of practicing the virtues of God, the revealed virtues of God, the virtue of respect for human dignity, the virtue of respect for love, the virtue of justice, the virtue of compassion, the virtue of righteousness, the virtue of truth-telling, the virtue of honesty, the virtue of carefulness, the virtue of humility, the virtue of dedication to whatever you find yourself doing in public life, in your family, in your private life. Everything is collapsed and it has become whole and one. So this is the person that is involved in civil life and civil resistance or yeah civil resistance do we have examples of faith actors yes we do have examples all through the ages we have had people like uh, men and women in every region or every continent in europe for example we have uh, john wesley John Wesley was an itinerary preacher who during his time, Britain was down, was ruined by immorality, was ruined by everything that is negative against humanity. But his preaching led to transformation to the extent that they have in parliament at that time, a man called William Wilberforce who because of the messages that John Wesley preached understood that the slaves were human beings too and he fought against slavery. You have Dietrich, uh, Dietrich uh, Bonhoeffer who stood out against the Nazi regime that condemned certain ethnic groups and was doing genocide. Genocide was com committed against the Jews and against other ethnic groups that were not uh, uh, German. We also have Archbishop uh, Gitari, David Gitari, and John Ukulu of Kenya. These are two Anglican bishops that fought against the injustice, the inhumane treatment of, you know, uh, farmers. The politicians were taking over lands that belongs to the peasants and owning the, using them for themselves. And these people stood against that. We have Desmond Tutu who fought against apartheid system in uh, South Africa. We have Mahatan Gandhi in Asia, Mahatma Gandhi, who used non-violent action to pull down you know, colonialism in India. We also have Martin Luther King, who used nonviolence to bring down racism and to collapse that evil that was going on in America. We have other people in other places that God has been using as faith actors. Their civil commitment and involvement have one thing in common. They were all nonviolence resistance and these people did not allow the injustice that was going on in society to continue because they understood 
they had a discernment of the public significance, the public implication of their Christian faith. They knew that their faith was not a private faith. So they used that understanding of faith to pursue the issues that will enable society to become a humane society. They were looking for a repositioning of their society. They want a situation where their society was transformed and made a society that was comfortable, habitable for everybody. So that the resources that God has given them, they will be, they will be able to benefit from them. So these people, God used them tremendously. Contemporary theories of resistance. One of the things I would like us to look at in these lessons, what are the contemporary theories? Basically, there have been two theories that have been controlling anyone that is involved in civil society, uh, civil society and resistance. There are people who are going back, you know, they were going, to, you know, through two specific issues or theories, pacifism and just war theory. Until in the, in the 1990s, 10 ethicists and theologians came up with another theory, which is just peacemaking, the need for just peacemaking. In a world of conflict, two sides are fighting violent conflicts here and there, Christian and Muslims in Nigeria, in other places, the same Christians are fighting against each other or Muslims are fighting against each other. But we have two groups divided. So each of these groups needs to find a place where they feel justice has been solved. If you will settle and bring peace. So just peacemaking takes both pacifism and just war seriously. Yet it seeks to bring to the fore non-violent action or resistance. It is an embodiment of Christ's vision of a wall of shalom that is peace as wholeness. It is basically seeking to ensure that justice and love are served in the settlement of disputes or in trying to stop the escalation of conflict violence in a given society. So this is the theory that I'm promoting as we think about the public implication of our faith, the public importance of my faith as a Christian. How do I create a wall of peace where faction groups, divisions, uh, evil and violence towards each other or genocide Ethnic cleansing is stopped. It can only be stopped when both sides are here to see each other as human beings created in the image and likeness of God. So basically, we need public discernment of faith. Any concrete faith actor, if they would be able to do a walk if they will be able to carry their faith to every sphere of life and bring peace and bring justice and bring love and bring compassion to any sphere, they must understand the connection between their Christian faith and public life. They connect the contested public sphere and so on. They must understand that significance. To be effective faith actor, one needs to collapse the sacred secular divide. Christian faith is not meant for a private life. It is meant to be carried into every sphere of life with the intention of bringing transformation of that you know, uh, sphere of life, repositioning it to fit the vision of God. To be a place, a humane society or a, a humane sphere where human dignity is respected, where justice is 
carried out where love is emphasized, where human harmony, where, where, where hard work is encouraged, where truth telling is the key, you know, where love is practiced, where transformation, holistic transformation, integral transformation is happening, you know, and this is not just about Christians, it is about everybody. To have this discernment is also to understand the fact that all of us, like as uh, John Stott would say, every human being, whether a Christian or a Muslim or a none of this, a person, a religious person or a non-religious person, is capable of doing tremendous good, but equally able to do tremendous evil. So why will we not give off on our, our society when you find yourself in any sphere and overwhelmed by the injustice in that sphere? Don't give up because that sphere is capable of doing tremendous good. It is also capable of doing tremendous evil. That is why it is there now, but you can move it to doing good, like the example I gave you of, uh, you know, John Wesley, whose messages, whose lifestyle, whose, uh, he embodied the message he was preaching. And through that, he became an example for people like William Wilberforce, who understood human dignity and preached and promoted a policy that eventually led to the abolition of slavery and transformed a world of evil trade, a trade of inhumane trade against humanity was transformed because of him. Of course, we still have you know slavery going on in other forms, but at least legally is not accepted anywhere. So that is what we are talking about. You know the transformation we want. The same thing with, you know, Martin Luther King. Even though racism is still in the U.S., but it's not accepted. It's not accepted. So, as I leave you with this lesson, I want you to recognize that your faith has a public implication. And the public implication of your faith is what makes you get involved in civil commitment and civil resistance and non-violent civil resistance. But here are some questions that you need to ponder on. How can contemporary Christians become faith actors? What is the connection between your faith and all the spheres of life? What is the public implication of your faith? Do you understand that? What are the issues involved in your society that may require you to play the role of a non-violent faith actor or civil committer and civil resistor? How can a faith actor maintain a total balance between public commitment and civil resistance? Do you have contemporary examples or Christians that are, embody, are an embodiment of commitment to civil society and non-violence resistance. What fresh ideas and skills have you learned in this lesson that can help you to take your faith and use it to collapse the division between sacred secular? There is nothing like sacred secular because Jesus is Lord of all of life. And if we claim that Jesus is the Lord of all of life, there is no way we can accept sacred, secular divide. Here are some resources that will help you. One book that will help you is a book that was published in 2020, African Public Theology. This was co -auto, I mean, co-edited by Sunday Bobay Agam, Dion Foster, Johan uh, Hendricks, 
both of uh, Stellenbosch University and myself, Nigeria. There is a book I published in 2016. It is called When Evil Strikes, Faith and the, Pop the Politics of Human Hostility. Uh, this you can find on Amazon. The third book that I need you to take a look at is The Course of Discipleship by uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. In Season and Out of Season is a book by Guitari, David Guitari. And then there is a book by Cynthia Molobeda, uh, Healing a Broken World. It's a very important book. It was published in 2002. John Stott book, which was published in 1999, New Issues Facing Christianity Today. And there's a website where you can find 30 examples of successful non-violent action. You can get that on www.dailygood.org. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.